kick it, Jackie Chan. Oh, Jamar Chase with the dive. You know, Garrett Wilson's wide open. Garrett Wilson, touchdown Barrett. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the video in the World of Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of the Oregon Ducks Rebuild here on NCAA College Football 25. That is right. Unfortunately, it is only a mod. But still, we're having a good time here and we are waiting the ever-anticipated debut and I guess you could say more so of a return for the real college football game that will come out in sometime in mid-July of this year. This series, as I've said the entire time, will run up until that point in July when the game comes out. I'm assuming it's July 19th. That's kind of the, the date that everybody has pretty much come to terms on and I think it's what EA Sports released. I'm pretty sure. So July 19th is the day. This series will run up until then, and then we will move on to massive amounts of NCAA football content here on the channel. Multiple dynasty modes, road to glories, maybe even checking out the ultimate team. Probably not a whole lot of ultimate team content, because that's not what I do, but a lot of ultimate team uh, content will be around on other people's channels, and I'll, I'll check it out probably. And then most importantly, some rebuilds. Some traditional like one one-off video rebuilds. So those are going to be coming to the channel. Lots of NCAA football content. And then the next month in August, the new Madden game comes out. So the end of the summer, there's going to be a ton of content here on the World of Juice channel. So I hope you guys are ready for it. But for now, we have to quell our thirst for college football content with the great college football mod that the modders over in uh, the Madden Modding, Madden Modding Community Discord page. You may, you'd think I'd be able to say that by the many times I say it all the, like every video and stuff. But over there at the Madden Modding Community Discord page have created a great mod. We've done plenty of videos over it, and we're doing a series right now with the Oregon Ducks. We just beat the Oregon State Beavers in the Civil War last episode. It was a crazy game. I think we put up like 50-something points, 52 points maybe. We intercepted DJ Uyungle a couple of times. It was a great day. And then in the win... We grabbed their right tackle, Fuaga. Tal Talisa Fuaga, I think is his name. I don't 100% know. He's a draft prospect this year. He's probably going to go top 15 in the draft. So he's now our right tackle. That's awesome because that solidifies our right side of our offensive line. But now we get to play maybe the biggest game of the season up until this point. We play game number two against Washington. In game number one a couple episodes ago, we won that game, and that's how we acquired Roma Dunze. Now, we have arguably a better team than when we played them before, and we've been playing a lot better in recent episodes up until that point, up until this point, than when we were playing beforehand when we played Washington the first time. So, it's a different game. It's a different team. We have Caleb Williams now under center, who's looked really, really good as our quarterback. I'm not sure if we do end up winning this game. I'm not sure who we would grab from their team since we already took a Dunze. I guess maybe a defensive guy probably wouldn't be too bad, but we'll have to wait and see. But this game is not just important because it's the second game against Washington. It is important because Washington has pretty much dominated and controlled the division from the get-go. They were undefeated for a while, then they lost to us. We were their first loss. And then... They lost another game down the line. Now they have two losses. Can we beat them, give them their third loss? And I'm pretty sure that would make us jump them in the standings because then that would be 2-0 and against them. We'd have the season series. We would obviously get the advantage over them. That is the goal. This basically, you could think, is for the conference. This is for the conference right here. If we beat Washington and everything else goes our way, we'll easily be conference champions. Who knows what's going to happen? Hit that like button if you're excited. Subscribe to the channel. Join the Juice Club. And let's go play Washington again. Game number two against them. But this time, we've got Caleb Williams. Not only do we have Caleb Williams on the team, but we have two separate tandem breakouts on the offense. I'm assuming it's for receiver and for corner because I've never... I don't think I've ever seen a tandem breakout on offense or defense that wasn't for a receiver or cor uh, corner. 
I don't think I've ever seen one for like a defensive lineman or a linebacker or a tight end or a running back. I don't think I've, when it's tandem breakout, I think it's always corner and receiver. But I guess we can confirm that with some, uh, with finding out what this is. This is for the offense, and it's Roma Dunze and Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison did have a good game against Oregon State, and Rome wants to uh, either challenge him or praise Roma Dunze or challenge Roma Dunze. I'm going to go praise Roma Dunze because I think that gives us a little bit of an easier path to get him his goals. I don't know what his goals are going to be. I guess they'll show us. So Marvin gets 2,500 XP for inspiring the teammates, and we have to get 150 plus receiving yards for Roma Dunze against his former team, which is crazy. Talk about uh, poetry. Talk about script writing. That's pretty That's pretty awesome. And then the defensive one is four corners. So it's... And I have heard that I, I probably am pronouncing the name wrong. It's Cooper DeJean and not Cooper DeJean. How it, how it looks like it would be pronounced as Cooper DeJean. I've been saying it like Cooper DeJean. I'm pretty sure it's Cooper DeJean. So I will now call him Cooper DeJean. I apologize for mispronouncing it. But this is challenge Kyrie Jackson or praise Kyrie Jackson because Cooper had a pick six against Oregon State last episode. Interception bonus goal or ratings boost? I'm going to give him the ratings boost. So that's double praise for both of our guys. But we've got Kyrie Jackson needing to get a goal. So Cooper gets 2,500 XP for inspiring his teammates. Get two plus combined interceptions and pass deflections with Kyrie Jackson against Washington. That is going, but he gets plus three zone and man. So I guess that's helpful. That's going to be very, very tough. We've got a goal on offense and on defense against Washington. I wish this was just a normal game. I wish I didn't have to focus on any goals. I'm just going to go out there and play my game. If Roma Dunze does get 150 plus receiving yards, then that's cool. But that's not going to be my main focus. This is what the team looks like headed into this game against Washington. Obviously, it's a little bit different than when the last time we played Washington. But if they have a defensive tackle that I would uh, like, or if they have a defensive lineman that we could bring in, then we can move doorless inside and have a good defensive end uh end that would be ideal but we'll see what happens we will jump into this game against washington and try to beat them two times in the same season it's very difficult to beat a team two times in the same season but i will certainly try my best what jersey should we rock with to to uh, <clears throat> excuse me today i had a, a, a frog in my throat i don't know what uniforms to rock with we haven't rocked the all yellows with the black wings or the chrome wings to be fair this one has a black face mask which kind of looks cool this one has a, a yellow face mask with the chrome wings you know what let's rock the the yellow with the black face mask whether we get the black wings the black number lettering and all kinds of stuff let's rock that against washington and we'll see if we can get the job done pac 12 after dark Game two, Washington, Oregon. Let's get it done. It is showtime, ladies and gentlemen. Ducks and Huskies probably battling for the Pac-12 conference right here. I know there's still a few games left to go in the season, but this is between the two best teams in the Pac-12, and they might have already started with a huge play. That was a great one to start the game. And here we go, the lefty specialist. Michael Penix, extended Penix, will come out onto the field for the first time tonight. The lights are bright, and that's when we hopefully will shine the brightest. It's going to be play action already, and he gets it out of the, the hands and throws it to the tight end. Seven yards, quick throw from Penix. That's a little upsetting. We should have had pressure on the quarterback because he held that ball for a while before he decided to check that down and it's going to be a run a handoff to the running back he gets the first down johnson dylan johnson 17 carries 53 yards last game against whoever they played all i know is we need to dominate we need to dominate defensively we need to dominate offensively we can't allow for washington to build any momentum of any kind because if they do we will be in trouble. I would like my defensive line to actually get some pressure. Pick that off. It's Tommy Eichenberg, the captain of the defense. Tommy Eichenberg, the former Ohio State Buckeye transfer. Just standing there in the middle of the field. And Michael Penix throws a right to him. A Big Ten connection. Former Indiana starting quarterback Michael Penix throwing to former Ohio State Buckeye quarter uh, linebacker Tommy Eichenberg. He tried to go slant middle of the field to the tight end. Eichenberg found it. 
And now we got Caleb Williams in the offense. That's the kind of dominant start we needed. Now remember, Roma Dunze is in need of 150 yards, but I cannot lose focus on just winning the game. At this point, we need to win every single game so we can make the playoffs and get to the national championship game. So I cannot ruin a, a season or ruin a game. Oh, that's a crazy catch by Marvin Harrison, by the way. I cannot ruin a game by trying to force feed one singular receiver and get like one-sided. So we got to just go to whoever's open. And that being Marvin Harrison, even though Marvin Harrison technically wasn't super open on that catch, but he made it work. I don't even know if I've actually gotten any of these goals to work this year. I'm pretty sure every time we've had an opportunity to do one of these things, it has not worked. But we are going to get the bonus goal for Roma Dunze. That was the bonus goal. Get him a touchdown against his former team. And he's got the, the ducks on the board to begin this one. So we capitalize on the interception. It only takes us, what, four plays to get into the end zone. Two runs, two pass. And the boys are already on the board. I don't know what has gotten into us on the offensive side of the football. But ever since we got Caleb Williams, and even, to be fair, Bo Nix was playing really well before that. It's really been the past, like, six episodes. Ever since we had that game where I cracked and I just completely lost my mind when we lost that game. I don't remember who we played, but that game where I just broke down and, and just got so mad, and then I, I turned the difficulty down and blew, a, uh, blew out Ohio State. Ever since that game against Ohio State, when we won and we, we destroyed them, and then I moved the difficulty back up, obviously, to all Madden, we have absolutely dominated and looked really, really good. So I don't know what the difference is, as Kyrie Jackson's kind of getting cooked right now. We have just been super, super talented and playing super well and also getting very lucky. You can't deny that we've got we haven't gotten lucky in some of these games. And that honestly should have been an incomplete pass. I don't know how he held on to that ball. That's a good uh is that Jalen Polk? That's uh that was a good catch by him. Good hands. Ooh, Michigan beat Texas. That's kinda crazy. That's a good run from Dylan Johnson. That's an annoying run from Dylan Johnson, really. I'm gonna need Michael Penix to make another error. He needs to throw another pick or do something, make another bad decision, because if they just continue to run the football, they're going to be hard to stop. We're not the greatest run defense in college football. Iowa beat Tennessee. That's a wild stat, stat line right there. <laughs> Notre Dame got shut out by North Carolina. That's crazy. Oh, how did he get that away? Why couldn't he just hold it for another second? I could have sacked him easy. Sam Hartman did not play very well in that, that loss to North Carolina. So it looks like Drake May, better quarterback than Sam Harton, I guess. Second and 10 for Washington. I need to dominate this. How did he catch that? I was on him with Johnson, man. I was, Johnson was on his back. How did he catch that? That's the guy that Penix tried to throw over the middle and got picked off by Eichenberg. That Westover guy. That's who he tried to target. That's across the middle of the field. It's dropped. He did the exact same thing, and he dropped it this time. Oh, Brian Addison. Or Braylon. What, what is his name? I think it's Brian Addison. Whatever his name. I always mix it up. <laughs> Addison dropped. It was on his hands. He did the exact same thing that he did previously. That's an interception. It's not an interception. Kyrie Jackson got fooled. Oh, it's McMillan, the other stud receiver alongside Roma Dunze in real life. How in the world did Kyrie Jackson not even get a hand on that? That's crazy. And they will not snap the ball before the quarter ends. So we go into the second quarter. Barely holding on to our one touchdown lead. We will see what comes of it right here on this play. Eichenberg's in the backfield. Tommy got shaken off. And he's going to score the touchdown. I cannot believe. I read that perfectly. I was in the backfield unbelievably quick and Eichenberg got stripped only me only me would that happen to ladies and gentlemen every other person would have brought that guy down but because I'm the one on the sticks I get shaken off and it's a touchdown by Dylan Johnson 
Absolute craziness. He's got 18. Roma Dunze's got 18 of his 150. We'll see what we can do with it. I highly doubt that he's going to be able to get 150. Can I get this to work? If I send him up the field... Oh, I didn't send the right guy up the field, but it worked nonetheless. t -Ferg catches it second and one. Uh, I'll give this to Bucky Irving. Maybe Bucky can get this first down here. And Bucky certainly can. Bucky Irving with a nice carry. Six yards gets the first down. And we'll go with a little stick play because Rome is in the middle here. Uh-oh. That guy leaped over my guy. But it doesn't matter. What the heck, Rome? What the heck, Rome? Uh-uh. 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 We got to see instant replay of this. Rome Adunze. First off, this is wild that he leapfrogged my, my guard like that. It's <laughs> just absolutely leapfrogged him. But Roma Dunze, what are you doing here? Look at all this space you have right here. You get bumped initially by the guy. Or does he even get bumped? I don't think he, he might have gotten bumped a little bit, but he just stops. What are you doing? He had so much room right here. I could have caught this and maybe taken it all the way up to the 20 or something if, if Marvin or if um, Troy Franklin blocks. But this is crazy that he just stopped his route. I hate that in this game, man. I really hope that's not in the new NCAA game. The fact that they just randomly stop their routes in the middle of the field. Because if that's in the new NCAA game, then the NCAA game's cooked. It's cooked. But that's a good catch from Rome. He actually didn't stop his route that time. Hand the ball off to Braylon Allen, who's been an unbelievable dark horse addition to this squad. Ever since we brought in Roma Dunze, we've just been able to run the ball so much more efficiently than just with Bucky Irving. Although I say that and I get stopped for a loss on one. That, that was more my fault. I didn't run the right the right way there. Another one. That's Rome again. And Roma Dunes, they starting to rack up the yardage. I said it might not happen for him, but if he's going to keep getting open like that and catching big time passes, then I'm going to be it's going to be hard to deny him the ball. Another one for Braylon Allen. He fights forward. He's got 5 yards. Solid carry. Solid carry. Where do we go next? Maybe a tight end drive play? Possibly. I don't really... I'm not really a big fan of these because I don't like my tight ends that much. I mean, my tight ends are fine. I'm going to just step up, step up with Caleb Williams, get the first down. I don't really run a lot with Caleb Williams, but he's got the potential to, so... Take that. And then... Adunze and Franklin are running the underneath. So I'm probably going to look at one of them. Probably Franklin here. Oh, he caught that, but it was a little bit behind him. Had to slow him up. That was a difficult throw for, for anybody to make, so I'm happy that Caleb actually completed it. And we'll run some quarterback keeper on the read option. Thought I was going to have more of an open lane there. That's okay. We'll run my favorite play, mesh spot. It should get Ferguson or Kelly open. doesn't really matter. Although if Ferguson can't get open off the line, it's not going to help, but he gets open finally. I guess you could call that a little bit of a delay <laughs> on his route, even though he just kind of got pushed back by the rest of the players it worked it worked nonetheless and we go quickly to marvin harrison he's got a touchdown it gets pushed down after the play that's a little unnecessary roughness but a touchdown for marv maserati marv and the boys are back on top another efficient drive and remember we get the ball to start the second half so if we can make washington take a long time take two minutes basically or i guess if we turn them over quickly as long as they don't come away with points in this drive, I will be happy. I will be happy. I don't know how it's going to be, but I really need to not come away with points here. Dylan Johnson's got that touchdown. Even though I tackled him in the backfield. All right, boys, let's step it up. We had a really good drive where he threw a pick, and then we had a bad drive where they scored a touchdown. Let's have another good drive where he throws a pick. They're going to hand it off to Dylan Johnson. And Dylan Johnson's a, a man. He's a man's man. He just keeps getting big-time yards, taking a chunk out of the defense each time. They're going, hurry up. It's going to be caught. Kyrie Jackson. The way the camera angled that, that play, it looked like Kyrie Jackson had an easy pick. I'm not quite sure how he didn't have an easy pick there. Or at least a knockdown at the at the worst. Like, how, how did you not <laughs> get a hand on that football? That camera work was deceiving. That's going to be intercepted. It's Cooper DeGene. He makes another interception. And he made the most acrobatic of all picks. Oh my god. Did you see that? 
You gotta see this replay. I know it happened really quickly. It was like a bang bang type of play. Penix gets it, instantly chooses to throw. This is heavily contested. And Cooper just said, no, that's my ball. That is my, my football. Cooper Adagine with the play of all plays. <laughs> that's crazy. That is insane catch from Cooper. And they think he can't play because he's what? He can play because he's what? Where do we go here? Do we go deep to Dunze? No, we got to take our take our time. Just can't get too crazy because we got the ball back. Marvin Harrison just... What is going on? Marvin Harrison just stayed on his feet for no reason. I thought he was going to go down easy. Uh, let's roll quickly. Fired again to Marv. I thought that was going to get swatted away. It looked like it was going to get swatted away. That lineman jumped right in front of my face. Oh, and Marv doing a little LeBron? Okay. Former Buckeye out of... Could have been a former Buckeye. <laughs> uh, where do we go here? Over the top. That's a risky throw. Knocked it complete. Thank God he knocked it complete and didn't intercept it. I thought that that middle of the field was going to be a lot more open than it was, but it was It was not. It was completely, completely covered by everybody. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't have anybody. Mm. Nobody got open. I was expecting Rome to get open. He When he made his break in the middle of the field, he just never got open. That guy blanketed him the whole time. And then I didn't have anywhere else to go. He was my one and only read. I'm going to step up with Caleb Williams and maybe get a couple of those yards back. It's fourth and nine. I'm going to go for this. It's a little risky, but even if I do, they're not going to have much time anyway. So even though I don't get it. But I'm going to go Rome. It's intercepted! Please tackle him. How did he get it intercepted? That was supposed to be a bullet pass to Rome. I mean, it was a bullet pass, but how did this get picked off? Rome has all the separation in the world. I don't know how this ball gets picked off. Maybe I could have done a better job leading him, but other than that, like, this ball should have been easily picked, uh, easily caught by Roma Dunze, and yet... He turns on the hyper jets and just jumps right in front of the ball. That's crazy, the fact that that was picked off. And now they have the ball with 27 seconds and three timeouts and a chance to get a field goal before the end of the half. We'll see what Penix decides to do. He goes to the outside. He runs out of bounds. Second and one, 23 seconds to go. Still all their timeouts remain. Maybe running zone is not the best idea, but we'll see what happens. I need that not to happen. I really need that not to happen. That's instant field goal range. I'd prefer if they didn't get a touchdown here. That would be really brutal. If we did all of this work just to have them tie it at the half. But Kyrie Jackson, that's a pass breakup. I don't know if that's a pass deflection or not. 15 seconds, two timeouts. We got to stop him here. Penix has got to make a mistake. He's made two already. He can make more. Play better defense. Come on, guys. We're in man coverage. What are we doing? Nine seconds, one timeout. I mean, they're obvious in field goal range, but it doesn't matter because they score a touchdown. Mm. The fact that that ball got picked off is crazy, man. That's crazy. Why did it have to get picked off? I put that ball in a good spot, a good enough spot to get caught, at least. Maybe it wasn't the best spot, but it was in a good enough spot to get caught. <sighs> All right, well, now we have no choice but to just maybe heave one and see what happens. Maybe we get in a field goal range. Marvin Harrison, one on one. Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. at the buzzer! <laughs> oh! One play. It 
and it's a touchdown at the buzzer. At the end of the half, we score. We score a touchdown with literals triple zeros on the clock. If that would have been a game winner, oh my god, I would have flipped even more than I already did. Oh my god. That was the craziest catch I've ever seen in my life. I was just heaving to Marvin Harrison. Maybe something would happen. And I got something to happen. Marvin mossed the corner that was covering him. And then outran the rest of them and scored the touchdown. Oh my god, Marv. You're insane, big dog. You are insane. I wish you were the guy that needed the 150 yards because you'd be right there. <sighs> I, I don't know if I could recover after that. That is one of the craziest catches I've ever witnessed in my life. There's not many more catches that get that are better than that. That was the craziest catch ever. Sadiq with a nice catch. First down. Man, I was really bummed when I threw that interception and then they go down instantly and score. I was like, oh man, of course that's how it's going to happen, man. That's, that's just typical of what this game is all about. And then Marvin makes that catch with no time on the clock. Man, that was crazy. Oh, that's insanity. I'm still thinking about it. That is insanity. The fact that Marv made that catch. And now, of course, I'm going to get sacked because I didn't have anybody open when I know. Oh, Braylon Trice. That's right. Uh, that If we beat, end up beating Washington, that's a that would be a nice pickup. I forgot he was on the team. He's a first-round pick, I think, or at least maybe a high second-round pick. Maybe he shouldn't have ran the ball in second and 19. I kind of forgot it was second and 19 for a second. Uh, that's bad. The, that's okay because we can call with a bench dig. And I can have a man open. Sit down on it, Rome. Roma Dunze. Oh, my God. Thank you very much. Big catch from a big dog. And Braylon Allen, beautifully done. Getting us to the 18-yard line. Caleb can't really hear anything, but he's doing his job. Second and three. Do we just go Marv again? No, that's too easy. That's too easy. We're just going to take off and run with Caleb Williams. <sighs> I thought I was going to be able to outrun him. I really did. All right, hand this ball off to Braylon Allen. He should have easy blocking room, and he does. Seven-yard line is where we get to. Who do we go for here? Do we just go underneath? Probably just go underneath. Unless we hit Marv on top. No, it's, it's Rome. Rome across the middle of the field. Touchdown number two for Roma Dunze. And the Washington Huskies have gone down two touchdowns to the Oregon Ducks. Let's go. This has been a crazy game. This has been a crazy, crazy game. I'm just hoping that we can shut down Michael Penix on another drive here. If we can go up three touchdowns on Washington, I will feel very com comfortable and very confident that we can uh, hold on and win this game. But that remains to be seen. Who knows what's going to happen in this one? Jalen McMillan, three catches, 40 yards in that last touchdown at halftime, or right before halftime. We'll see what Penix chooses to do. He's made some weird decisions. I think he also made some weird decisions in that game that we beat him earlier in the season. He also made some weird passing decisions that led to, I think, interceptions. So he does it again today with two. And, of course, there goes the controller. It's a staple at this point on the channel. <laughs> it is a staple. Okay. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. They're going to completely change the play. What is it going to be? What is it going to be? Interception. It's got to be. Oh, turn me into Travis Hunter, please. I beg you, baby Jesus. Turn me into the guy that actually has a chance to play the ball, and I'd have so many more interceptions. That happens so often. It doesn't turn me into the right guy. Oh, Dorless just got bodied. Cooper. I didn't press triangle. I didn't know that ball was going to come to me. I thought that it was going to go right to the wide receiver, so I was just trying to tackle him. And the ball was inaccurate, and it went right to me. I wasn't expecting that. 
Oh, Doorless makes Penix run. That's going to be picked off. It's Travis Hunter. He has had so many receptions the past couple episodes. Travis Hunter has arrived, man. He was kind of just whatever the first couple of weeks we brought him in. But ever since, like, maybe four episodes ago, he's been absolutely dominant defensively. We're going to go underneath. It's Marvin. Little juke move. Make some things happen. And then we'll go to inside zone on Braylon Allen here. That guy got bodied. I don't know if that was a corner or what that was. Maybe a safety coming in for a blitz or something. I don't know what that was, but he got destroyed. Underneath again, it's Marvin. You know, I love me some Marvin Harrison. So when he's open, I got to throw it to him. And then maybe we take a shot to Roma Dunze. Maybe this is the shot to Roma Dunze. Ah, I had pressure come in a little sooner than I needed than I wanted it. So I had to throw it earlier, slightly earlier than I wanted to. And that's probably why it wasn't as accurate as a ball. Or it didn't get caught. I wanted that ball differently. And I got sacked. Fourth and 12, we got to punt it away. Oh, that was a bad last couple plays right there. That was a real bad last couple plays. But if I can pin them within like the two or something, that'd be awesome. We'll see what happens. They're going to let it go. Kyrie Jackson had a play on it, but I got blocked last second. I could have stopped that too. So they get it at the 20. Man, we had our chance too. Travis Hunter got us the ball back. We had our chance to actually go down and, and get a three touchdown lead, but I screwed that up. Travis Hunter misses the tackle. I missed the tackle again underneath. That's probably going to be the third quarter there, I would expect. Unless they can snap it one more time. I guess they could. I don't know if they why would they want to. And they will let it ride to the fourth quarter. So we have to hold on our two touchdown lead for six more minutes. If we can hold it for six more minutes, we will be a victor over the Washington Huskies for the second time in a single season. Which will give us, finally, for the first time I think all year, it'll give us the lead in the Pac-12. Which, yes, technically both these teams are in the Big Ten right now in real life. But this is, this is still Pac-12 football. So, it'll give us the lead because we'll jump them since we have the season series. It'll give us the lead in the Pac-12 conference. But that's not a good start to the fourth quarter right there. That's Polk. That is Polk with another big catch. He's had a couple big game or a couple big catches this game. But we're already down by a minute. Washington has already wasted a minute of football. In the fourth quarter, that's a ghost tackle at him. I may have gotten a, a some sort of like whisper on him. How did he fall down here? I got his ankle and he could not recover after that. That's crazy. I didn't think I even touched him. I got his ankle, his right ankle. I just barely nicked and he falls down after that. So I'll take that. That's huge because he was going to have a nice big run there. Oh, that's an easy sack that we just didn't get. That was an easy sack. We had two guys in his face. But he gets it away. It's Polk again. Polk and McMillan have had good games today. Now we're under four minutes to go. They've wasted two minutes of football here in the fourth quarter. Trying to get one touchdown. Intercept that ball, please. It's Tommy Eichenberg for number two of the day. What was Michael Penix thinking? What was Michael Penix thinking on this play? There's no reason to throw this. That is not covered, or that is not open at all. Even if Tommy Eichenberg wasn't here. Even if Tommy Eichenberg was not in this area right here. This is not open. Kyrie Jackson basically just blocked him out. He's boxed him out like he's going for a rebound there. I'm just glad that having these two guys go for the interception didn't cause it to like go incomplete because they both fighting for it. I don't know what Michael Penix is thinking here. This is not open. He threw this ball right here. This ball is not open, or this receiver is not open. McMillan's not open. And then Kyrie just jumps right in front of him. It would have been picked off either way. I don't know what Michael Penix was thinking. But Tommy Eichenberg comes out with pick number two on the day, and he keeps this a two-possession game. What a turn of events here in Washington. Where are they? At? Are they in Spokane? Is that where their field is at? I think that's where they're at. I'm not 100% sure. I think they play in Spokane. Can I get this to, to Roma Dunze? <gasps> that's going to be 150 yards. That's got to be 150 yards. 
Rome Adunze into the end zone. A two-play touchdown for the boys. Oh my god. He just he he got lost. Everybody lost him. It wasn't the greatest ball because I think Caleb Williams got hit on the throw. But I need to see what happened here. I need to see what happened here. So I see that this is like an instant win for Marv, but Marv's coming inside the middle, so I wasn't going to go to him. I was always going to go Rome, but it was always up to number 20. What was number 20 going to do? Was he going to follow Marv or was he going to follow Rome? That was what I was watching. But then he follows Marvin. Why would he follow Marv? And he bumps the guy that was initially covering him, number 25, and slows him down. And Roma Dunze has got nobody. And they were never going to catch him after that. I can't believe that number 20 made that big of a mistake. He chooses to follow Marv. And then bumps his guy, his own teammate, who was covering Rome. I still probably would have thrown it to him even if 25 was still there. It just maybe not would have been a touchdown. But the fact that he got bumped... And I'm just glad he didn't bump Rome. Because he was real close to him. Oh, that's crazy. So much craziness has happened in this game. I can't believe it. There's been crazy catches. There's been crazy plays. Crazy decision making by P Michael Penix. 35-14. to 14. This is the three touchdown lead I was asking for. And we have gotten it. And now, it is almost certain... We will have ourselves a double victory over Washington Huskies. We will have ourselves a two season or two game victory over Washington in one single season. And they were looking like the most dominant. It's another interception. It's Travis Hunter again. What is Michael Penix doing? But that fumble, it is. Oh my God. It's a fumble back to Washington. Hunter fumbled it on the, on the tackle. Are they going to challenge it? Okay, it's going to be a booth review. I don't know if, if Travis Hunter was down on the play. I honestly don't know. Ooh, was that knee down? Oh, I don't know. It's hard to tell because the game's not, like, super accurate, but they're going to call it back to me. Wow. Travis Hunter got bailed out. So Michael Penix has now thrown, what, five interceptions today? That's the same as what Caleb Williams threw when we beat him in, in USC. And now Braylon Allen just rubbing it in. Huge carry there. We'll go right back to him again, because why not? And Braylon Allen, I guess that's why not. He gets stuffed for nothing. But Caleb Williams has been killing it throwing the football today. Would this would have had would this have happened if we had Michael uh if we had Bo Nix? It's hard to tell. It probably would have went similar, because we still would have had the defensive plays. Oh my god, that's an easy touchdown for Caleb Williams. He's going to walk right in. That's an easy rushing touchdown for Caleb Williams. They completely vacated the left side of the field. Uh, this probably would have been similar to how the game would have went if we had if we had Bo Nix. Because the defensive possession still would have happened where we got the picks. But would Bo Nix have been able to hit those throws to Marvin Harrison at the end of the half? Most importantly. And then the last one there to, to Roma Dunes. I don't know if, those, if that would have happened the way that it did. Because we've seen times earlier in the year where Bo Nix was super inaccurate on the deep ball. But Caleb Williams, for the most part, has been pretty much on point. And we now lead 42-14. to That one, even if it was already pretty much guaranteed that we were going to win the game with the the last touchdown going up 35-14. to But now going up 42-14, to I could basically fall asleep at the wheel here and we'd, we'd have a victory. It's only four interceptions. That can't be right. It's only four interceptions. Two for Eichenberg, two for Travis Hunter. And Cooper has one, so that's five. Are they not counting Cooper DeJohns? Huh. I know there's been five interceptions today. Two for Tommy Eichenberg, two for Travis Hunter, and then one for Cooper DeJean. Are they not counting it? I guess we'll find out in the stats. Turn me into him, please! That could have been a pick for Kyrie Jackson. I think it's a pass deflection, though, so that works. But that could have been an interception. It'd be awesome if we could get both. Oh, that's a good uh, knockdown by whoever that was. I couldn't see clearly who it is. Oh, baby. Him. Oh, it's Cooper. No, that's not Cooper. Cooper has the white sleeves. I don't know who that was. Oh, it could be uh, Williams, the safety. That might be who it is. Fourth and five. Basically, last gas for Washington. And it's going to be caught. They have a chance. Well, to keep the drive alive, they have a chance. 
But we're going to have to go in the stats after the game and see if they're not counting one of the interceptions. Because I know I had five of them. Travis Hunter had two. Cooper had one. Because it's probably going to be my thumbnail. <laughs> Cooper's interception. And then... Tommy Eichenberg had two. So... You're not cheesing me on an interception here. I know I had five. And that is Travis Hunter. Good tackle. It looks like Washington is going to use the last of the minute on the clock here. We are now under a minute. To be fair, we don't need to go back on offense again. I mean, we, we did our job. We did everything we needed to do. We scored. We, we got Roma Dunze. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was crazy from Cooper. Uh, we got Roma Dunze the 150-plus yards. I'm assuming... I didn't check to see if he actually got it. But, I mean, that was, what, like a 60, 70-yard catch? And he already had, like, 60 yards or something like that? So, I hope he got close to it. I guess we'll find out when we take a look at the stats. But, I'm pretty sure we got the 150-plus with Rome. And we got him the, the touchdown bonus. So, the, we got both of them, actually. Oh, that's a... Ooh, that was a hard hit, too. That's just a drop. What team were we facing a couple episodes ago where they were dropping everything? Was that USC? Where they were dropping everything? Or was that Oregon State? I can't... No, it wasn't Oregon State. I can't remember exactly who uh, we played against where they were just dropping every single thing. It looks like Washington's building up here to, to score a touchdown. If this was a closer game, I'd be a little bit upset. But I don't really care at this point because we got the W, so... That's a good tackle. 20 seconds to go. Would they use a timeout here? I feel like they wouldn't. 14 seconds. This probably is the final play unless they get that first down or to slow the clock for a second. Uh, good tackle, Travis Hunter, and it does get the first down. So they'll have one play unless they want to use a timeout. Polk has 11 or seven catches for 111 yards. He's been killing it. All right, final play to the end zone. It's caught. Of course it is. It's a touchdown, so they make it look a little bit closer than it was, but we all know the final score was really 42-14. to 14. And we beat Washington twice. We have pretty much clinched up the Pac-12. I guess it's not guaranteed because there's still a few more games left to go in the season, so we could obviously lose those games and then lose the division. That's all possible. But if everything keeps playing out how it has, we have clinched the division. 345-5 and five for... Uh, for Caleb Williams is crazy. And they are only giving him four interceptions. That's not true. He had five. So who are they not giving the... Who are they not giving the interception to? But did Rome... Rome had 107... I thought he had 142 for a second. I thought that was, But that was Marv's stats. 170 yards for Roma Dunze. We got the goal. Plus the bonus goal of getting him a touchdown. And Marvin had 142 as well. Okay, so on defense, who are they not giving the interception to? So they gave Tommy his two. But they only gave one Travis Hunter. Oh, are they not giving him the interception because he fumbled it? Does he have a fumble? Do they count, do they give him fumbles on here? I don't know. I don't think they give fumbles. I think they're not counting that that is an interception because they gave him or he fumbled the football. Well, that's stupid. He picked it off. We got the ball back, like because they they overturned the fumble, so that still should be an interception. Ah, that's annoying. We had five interceptions today. You guys all know it. You guys all know it, and we beat Washington again. So now we get to choose a player to bring to Oregon to transfer in. And I think I'm going to go with Trice. Because then we can officially move Brandon Dorless inside to de-tackle. And then have a dominant edge. Okay, here we go. I don't think that we got it with Kyrie Jackson. But Roma Dunze we definitely got. So we'll see what happens here. Yeah, this is the Kyrie Jackson one. He didn't get it. I tried. If they would have... Wait, he got 2,500 XP? He did get it. Wait. What? He got it? I appreciate you challenging me to be a better coach. Our talk played as able to do this week. I knew you had this kind of performance in you. Roma dudes that had a career day and earned plus five catch and traffic and release. Can you give me a dev trade upgrade? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Oh, we have our bye week at week 13. Uh, can I view the box score real quick? Did I get it with, with Kyrie Jackson? Defensively, Kyrie Jackson had two pass deflections. He did get it. Okay. I don't remember his other one. I remember the one that got thrown to his back, but I don't remember the other one. But now it's time to take a Washington player. Who are we going to grab? 
Who are... I could have just went up, couldn't I? <laughs> it's probably going to be Braylon Trice. Now, I've been looking for a dominant edge rusher for a while. So Braylon Trice is coming to Oregon, and we are going to send them back somebody. Probably this guy, Mateo Uyungale. Is he brothers of DJ? I have no idea. He could be. But we get that back... So Braylon Trice now plays right end, and we can go in and make Brandon Dorless his official position, which is he's more suited to be a defensive tackle. And that's probably what he, he will be drafted as. So let's go here. Edit player. Turn Brandon Dorless into an official D tackle. Bada bing, bada boom. He goes up to a 90 even. And now we've got ourselves Trice and Chop Robinson on the edges. And I'm liking the way that we're looking here. And we even have a, a bonus upgrade for him, too. So that's awesome. All right. We got ourselves a dom. So from Washington, we were able to pull Roma Dunze and Braylon Trice, two of their best players. You got to love it. You absolutely got to love it. The team's looking really, really good now, getting even better. And now we've got ourselves the bye week. And we will get to week 14. This first season's wrapping up pretty quickly. All right, so we got a bye week. We've got nothing to do. So, and we have officially jumped Washington. Nine, and, they're nine and three. We're nine and three. And they had a bye week too. We've got a defensive breakout and a. Oh, what's this? What's this? This is for. I feel like the last couple of weeks, everybody wants their number called. It's time to make a play. Oh, throw three touchdowns against Oregon State for a game boost. Well, we just blew out Oregon State in the Civil War Part 1 last episode, or uh, a couple episodes ago. No, it was last episode. Yeah, last episode. So now we have to throw three touchdowns. I guess I shouldn't have done that because now I'm going to forget, aren't I? But I guess I'm going to try to throw three touchdowns anyway. <laughs> and we have a defensive breakout as well. Next episode, it's going to be the Oregon State Beavers versus the Oregon Ducks Civil War Part two hope you guys enjoyed this one this is a crazy game by the way with some of the the stuff that happened in it so it was absolutely wild i hope you guys enjoyed it. if you did leave it a like subscribe to the channel join the just club thank you so much for stopping by and watching i truly appreciate it and i will catch you guys in the next one peace